A Less Than Royal Narcissist, Part 42.3 Having talked about the various groups that have no interest or some interest with regard to the situation involving Meghan Markle and the royal family, and of course focusing upon the group of obsessive followers that have attracted the label of the Shuggers, I've pointed out some of their characteristics and how their views are misguided in terms of the standard retorts that they give. But who are these people in terms of how would we characterise them? This, of course, must be done with relevance to the issue of narcissism, as, of course, this is what my work is about. It is undoubtedly the case that certain of these sugars are unaware narcissists, but they will not form the vast majority for reasons that I shall explain. Like any other individual that exhibits self-entitled views, opinionated ones, absent of a consideration of the evidence, use of pejorative terms, ad hominem attacks, a rigidity of approach, the sugars fit, or certain of them fit, with the behaviour of a narcissist. You will have come across individuals, in life and on the internet, whereby they trot out of you and notwithstanding your repeated attempts to get them to see reason or the evidence on an alternative view and consider it, they just will not. And they deflect, they deny, they use word salads, they use circular arguments, an absence of apparent logic to you, and you find the whole experience extremely frustrating. Often these individuals are labelled as trolls. Narcissists are trolls, but not all trolls are narcissists. And indeed, amongst the sugars, there will be numerous individuals who are narcissists. The fact is that they will acquire the character traits of Meghan Markle, seeing her as an extension of themselves. When you point out that Meghan Markle has done something which demonstrates that she has told a lie, or that you observe your own view, no matter whether it's well-merited or not, that you don't like Meghan Markle, this, of course, is seen as a threat to the control of the narcissist, which is a sugar. You are telling them that they are wrong and that you are right. You are issuing challenge fuel. And therefore, the sugar that is a narcissist unconsciously has their control threatened. And therefore, their narcissism, of which they are unaware, causes them to have to nullify your threat to their control. And therefore, this results in standard squawked responses of, you're a racist, you don't know her, you're hating on her, leave her alone. Notice that there's no actual discussion there as to, your view is racist because, and that there is actual reference to evidence and a considered response, it's very much that knee-jerk, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm big, you're weak, I'm tall, you're small. The black and white response of the narcissist, I'm right because I'm right because I'm right. Now, I have not seen across the internet where there has been such a debate, but I'm sure that it will exist in some places, anybody that comes back with an appreciable view of the evidence that's considered that is a sugar. I have seen individuals who are clearly not sugars who have formed up their own view, which they're perfectly entitled to do, to be supportive of Meghan Markle and identifying racist behaviours amongst other individuals because the racist behaviour does exist. It's nowhere near as to the great extent as is suggested, but it is there. Those individuals that can construct an argument whereby they say, well, there's this evidence that shows that this individual is racist and it's because, those aren't the sugars. Because that individual, whether you agree with their view or whether you do not, they are at least showing an appreciation for the evidence and articulating themselves in an appropriate manner. There are also other individuals who are open to having their views altered. They form a view, they see more evidence, and they alter that view. They don't have a rigid approach, 
and the presentation of that additional evidence doesn't pose a threat to their control. Where you see the repeated knee-jerk response, which is basically, I'm not listening to you, you're a racist because whatever you've said is a criticism of Meghan Markle, therefore that must make you a racist, therefore that must make you a hater, therefore that must make you somebody who doesn't know them and you're not allowed to comment, but I'm allowed to comment on you. Evidence is, of course, the hypocrisy. I'm allowed to comment about you even though I don't know you, but you're not allowed to comment on Meghan Markle because you don't know her. I'm entitled to come and tell you all about my views. I'm entitled to come into your space, even though I wasn't invited, and impose my views on you. This might be a thread talking about the fact that Prince Philip has, has died, but I'm going to talk about Meghan Markle. And if you then criticise me for doing so, even politely pointing out, this is the thread about Prince Philip's funeral, we don't want to be talking about Meghan Markle, you're racist, you're a hater, because your response telling me that I'm not allowed to do this threatens my sense of control. And therefore, you will see, amongst the sugars, narcissists. Operating with a sense of entitlement, a lack of emotional empathy for those affected by the comments. No accountability for what they're saying. A complete failure to observe a consideration of the evidence. Manipulative behaviours, albeit often rather rudimentary. Insult, word salad, triangulation, belittlement, invalidation, and in some instances, silent treatment through withdrawal. Undoubtedly, there are those amongst the sugars that are narcissists, and that is what is driving their behaviour. They identify with Meghan Markle, seeking to acquire her character traits, and if you oppose their view, you threaten their control, and therefore in order to nullify the threat to control that you pose, you're insulted and the squawk comes and you're accused of being a racist and a hater, etc. There are numerous narcissists in the ranks of the shuckers. That doesn't mean that all the narcissists are in and amongst the shuckers. They will be on the other side also. But this is an analysis of the shuckers. However, the vast majority of those individuals that form the shuckers, and remember, shuckers aren't sort of common or garden supporters of Meghan Markle, because there will be people, as I've explained, that are not the hardcore. They think that it's nice that she's married the prince and they wish her a happy ever after, and they think it's sad that she has suffered in a particular way and has therefore moved away from Britain, and isn't it a shame? But they don't spend their time insulting people. Those supporters don't spend their time slavishly devoted to the cult of Markle. Those are perhaps empathic individuals, normal individuals, that have a view, and it's more towards the side of Meghan Markle, but they are not what you would call a sugar. And it's important to make that distinction. But within the sugars, the hardcore, there will be many narcissists. And they have that need to assert control over people by saying, Meghan's being treated badly, the British royal family is racist, the media are going to claim that Prince Charles contracted coronavirus because of Meghan Markle. There's a lack of emotional empathy with regard to what they say, what they write, a sense of entitlement to do that, rigidity of approach, black and white thinking, a failure to be accountable for their behaviours, and the use of crude manipulations. It all fits with the behaviour of narcissists. So the narcissists within the sugars operate the vanguard, but the other supporters, why, who will not be narcissists, why do they behave in the way that they do? This group would largely be made up of normals. And quite simply, they have identified for a vast array of reasons as liking Meghan Markle. It might be because they identify her along racial lines, along cultural lines, along uh, nationality. It might be that they like the idea of somebody outside of royal families, outside of the aristocracy, marrying in. It accords with the concept of a fairy tale. And those reasons and many others are why they nail their colours to the mast in support of Meghan Markle.
But why did they then behave in a rigid and unpleasant manner towards people who disagree with them? Well, it's down to two factors. First, herd mentality. They've picked a side and they stick with it and they don't want to break ranks. And therefore, they continue to trot out the same messages, often driven by the leading individuals within the sugars, the narcissists, and follow in their wake. The other aspect is, is down to this. They have picked a side, for reasons that I've already advanced, and nothing to do with the necessity of certain control. It's because they've formed a view. They don't like to be told that they're wrong, because nobody likes to be told that they're wrong. But the manner of their responses is unpleasant and rigid and belies lack of emotional empathy. Not because these people are absent emotional empathy. They do have it, just not for you when you disagree with them because you are a stranger on an internet. And as a normal, their radius of emotional empathy only extends to their children, their parents, some of their friends, their siblings, some colleagues, but not to you, the stranger on the internet. So when your view comes up against their view and is diametrically opposed, or that you're criticising the person that they hero worship or who they like or who they support, they are offended by that. And because they have no emotional empathy for you, although they do have emotional empathy, but it's not for you because you're a stranger on the internet they are quite capable of insulting you calling you names and not listening or considering what you have written that type of individual doesn't go around their daily lives in the way of a narcissist operating through a world lens of control an absence of emotional empathy the implementation of manipulative behaviors they actually would behave with emotional empathy an absence of the need to assert control and not being manipulative to their children, their friends, their family, etc. But when it comes to you, a stranger in a chat room, a stranger on a Facebook feed, a stranger in the comment section on YouTube, they have no emotional empathy for you. And when you say something which conflicts with their view about Meghan Markle, when you write something which tells them that they are incorrect, rather than pause and think, hmm, perhaps they've got a point, I'll consider the evidence. They just respond with unpleasant comments and a dismissal of what you've stated in a knee-jerk fashion, squawking out the various callings that I have identified earlier. They are not narcissists. They are unable to see it because they have formed a view and don't like to be told they are wrong. And because they've got no emotional empathy for you, they have no sense of accountability to you or your view. There's nothing to motivate them to consider what you have said. There's nothing to motivate them to pause and think, wait a moment, they might be right about that point. Remember, there are those that will consider the evidence, but they don't fall within the sugars. The sugar is the hardcore group that won't listen to anything. And accordingly, the sugars is made up of some narcissists, for the reasons that I've explained, and also a lot of normals who have picked a side and will stick to it in effect, having been brainwashed by the behaviours and the narrative that's formed by the narcissist. As I mentioned in the first part, there's a wide range of views and opinions appertaining to Meghan Markle in this ongoing saga. Those who aren't interested, those who thought it was wonderful and then see actually something's gone wrong and they've changed their views, and there may be others that were originally sympathetic to the royal family and they've shifted their views and they perhaps now feel that Meghan Markle has been badly treated. And then, of course, there are those which maintain that they've always thought there's something wrong about Meghan Markle and just don't like her for those reasons. There are those that have identified, aha, yes, it's narcissism, that's what's behind it, and may not really have a view about her other than I think her behaviour is wrong. I'm not really interested in her, but I see that her behaviour is wrong and I see that narcissism is driving it. And then there are those supporters who are of a slavish nature, who have earned the label of sugar. And, with, and I've explained some of their characteristics, there are others. And within all of that, their ranks are drawn from narcissists, and normals. You might 
get the odd empathic person in there, but I would find that unusual. You might get the odd empathic person in there who has suffered a temporary erosion of their emotional empathy, causing them to lash out at other people. But the bulk of the individuals within the ranks of the sugars are narcissists and normals. And the narcissists have a need for control, therefore a contrary opinion from you will always be rejected because it represents a threat to that control. And with regard to the normals, they have no emotional empathy for you, therefore that causes them not to consider your view, they just dismiss it out of hand. And it's more a case of they feel insulted by the fact that you disagree with them, and rather than consider the reasons why you disagree, they focus on the fact that you just disagree with them and therefore you're wrong. They don't look at the merits of your argument, just simply the fact that you're anti-Megan and therefore anything that must come out of your mouth must be wrong. You are prejudged in that manner. So, another phenomenon which of course involves narcissists and human behaviour appertaining to the supporters of Meghan Markle. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>